few years ago when I saw footage of Jedi Fallen Order at the last in-person E3, not that I was attending the last in-person E3, I was watching it online, but the E3 in question was, I believe, the last in-person one before the whole mess happened. I was impressed by the style of the game, where it used Dark Souls-style mechanics with Uncharted Traversal within a the Star Wars setting. Now I have finally played through the game, so it is time for me to give it a review. Jedi Fallen Order is set during the Rebellion era and follows Cal Cestus, a Padawan who barely survived Order 66 and has been in hiding ever since. When he's found out by the Empire, he ends up being rescued by fallen Jedi Knight Sarah Junda and the scoundrel captain of the freighter Stinger Mantis, Grease Dredus. Don't only get the last name said in the game, he's just called Grease, but that's what I'm getting from the ancillary materials. Siri knows where a holocron was hidden with the names and locations of thousands of Force-sensitive ch children, enough to rebuild the Jedi Order, or to allow the Sith to drown the galaxy in darkness forever. In any case, they need to find it before the Empire does, so that sets the game's story in motion. Now, this game combines Dark Souls, Metroid, and Uncharted elements. You navigate the world like Nathan Drake with a lightsaber and a poncho instead of a half tuck climbing, jumping, and sliding through the various environments of the game's multiple planets that you travel through. Each world map is pretty large, with lots of secrets to find and various ways to get from point A to point B, with certain routes being accessible until you get certain power-ups that assist with movement, and in some cases also combat, like with Metroid. Additionally, at checkpoints, you have meditation points or I should say instead of checkpoints, you have meditation points that you reach that allows you to save your game and spend skill points you earn by leveling up through defeating opponents. These points let you restore your hit points and re refill your supply of health con of your health consumable stim packs, for the cost of causing all the enemies, save for bosses, who defeated on the way there to respawn. Similarly, any experience points before um, the next uh, skill point that you've earned that you've obtained, um, should you fall in combat, you will lose, at which point you respawn at the next, well, at, at the last bonfire, or I should say, check a uh, meditation point that you've reached, but you can get all those experience points back by dealing damage to the enemy that hurts you. Kind of like the Dark, Dark Souls series, and a little bit of Bloodborne in there as well. Consequently, part of the key to successfully proceeding in the game is finding and unlocking shortcuts in the level environments to allow you to bypass some earlier areas of traversal when you come back the way you came, like Bloodborne, and also Dark Souls. That said, there is not the variety of playstyles available to you that there is in a Soulsborne game. By the end of the game, you will have probably most of your skill tree filled out. You can customize the appearance of your lightsaber, but you're not changing the stats in any way. It's just going to be a normal lightsaber. At certain story points, you'll get it uh, it'll change to a double-bladed version with the ability to switch between the two, so there's a little style difference there, which helps with certain combat situations. And then there's also one other slight footage um, flourish that you get with the game that uses some of your force meter to activate, but that's it. No big changes in weapon styles you can permanently switch between. No big significant change to your fighting style or stance, aside from going from one to two blades. In short, by the end of the game, odds are pretty good that, from a stats standpoint, your cow and my cow are going to be pretty much the same. There's not going to be the variety of play styles that you get with a Dark Souls game. Combat is generally pretty solid. Blaster bolts are pretty easy and actually pretty fun to parry. And landing counters against generic stormtroopers, particularly when they come after you with their shock staffs, is great. Things stumble somewhat in situations where you're going up against two to three troopers at once, or a bunch of melee troopers with other troopers shooting around you, shooting at you around the perimeter, where it becomes really difficult to manage blocking all these opponents. Same with several of the bosses, who throw in a whole bunch of attacks in very rapid succession at the player, and are thus also somewhat very tricky to manage in terms of timing the attacks to block. It probably speaks volumes that when you scale down the difficulty and try those boss fights again, the enemies just don't use those attacks. The story of Jedi Fallen Order is generally executed well. The crew of the Stinger Mantis has some really good chemistry, with Grease in particular having some good John C. Riley energy. 
The problem is there isn't much in terms of other cast members. You've got your Imperial Inquisitors as recurring villains, you've got a small spattering of bounty hunters who pop up every now and then, and a couple members of a rebel shell and Kashyyyk. That's it. You have incidental dialogue from stormtroopers who you encounter, who you're going to be killing later, and it, like the scarcity of character content in the game is enough where you like want to hold off and let the troopers banter for a bit just to give you some dialogue and something to feed off to there. Um, that's it. The level environments are wonderfully large and expansive and fun to explore, but this lack of interaction makes the world itself feel very barren and empty. Worse, there's no fast travel. There's no, or as in some Dark Souls games, you can certain degree fast travel between certain bonfires and that sort of thing, particularly starting like Dark Souls 2. Here, there's nothing. Um, you gotta you gotta hoof it all the way back on your own, and that does the further thing of making the game environments feel tedious and make it feel tricky and awkward to navigate through certain areas where you're not sure quite what the right way to get to point um, back from point A or from point B to point A is. So all in all, it's less visibly arresting and the world feels less like engaging in that respect from the dark from the uh dark and demon souls game or dark souls games and bloodborne and all of that it's fun to go through these areas the first time but once you have to go back it stops becoming excite it stops becoming exciting and novel and becomes kind of a drag in short Jedi Fallen Order is the most fun that I have had playing a Force user in a Star Wars game since the KOTOR games. And the implementation of Traversal in particular is great fun. Now, I hope that we get a sequel that has more character interactions in the game and also is willing to include the option for fast travel. Now that we've gotten the execution of these concepts down in this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.